Welcome everyone back to a Cloudless Mind podcast. Uh, Paul and I are here. I'm in Boulder and Paul is sitting over in Gouda yes. or Gouda cheese, like yeah. I like to call it, <laughs> in the Netherlands. And uh, today we're going to really drill into a topic that's, I think, incredibly relevant right now. And it's not really spoken about. You know, I've spent so much time and had thousands of you know coaching sessions and conversations with leaders and all of all matters of folks who are, are in serious situations, high stakes situations. And one of the things that is always kind of absent is, you know, about how our subconscious minds work as it relates to what our work is. And so today we're going to talk a little bit about the subconscious mind and how important it is to, first of all, understand it, but then program it in a certain way. So. So Paul, why don't you give us a sort of an, a higher level anatomical view, you know, from a brain space, and then, and then we can kind of dive into the differences between the conscious and the conscious mind and how we might be able to program them. Yes. So the difference is like the conscious part of our brain, it operates with the speed of 60 bits per second. Um, However, the unconscious part is 200,000 times faster per second, which means 11.2 million bits per second are processed, processed at the unconscious part. Now, when it comes to change, leadership, communication, etc., people tend to only focus on these 60 bits. Uh, and these 60 bits of awareness mostly are I could say it are storytellers. We come up with excuses and explanations, but it's all mostly blah, blah. Um, but once we believe all this noise and all these stories, we focus on all this drama, but what's actually necessary is to focus at the unconscious part of the brain where everything is happening. Um, and that's a total different approach. Right. I mean, how often would you think any some type of leader in an organization like views what's going on as everything is just going on automatically at a subconscious level and people in many ways are just program machines that have very predictable patterns but they don't treat it that way no no they mostly focus on story so it's like we have meetings for hours and hours or we make new values for the companies or, or write new policies or new structures etc and then we think with our neocortex like okay now we rationally created everything it will probably work and then they look back and think one year later wait, wait a minute not much has changed uh, and then they have a new meeting again so it's like they're in a loop and we all know that like in the Netherlands, over 70% of all change management, for instance, fails because we simply do not know how to trigger people's brains in the right way. We just have meetings constantly and that's all we do. Yeah, and it's mind blowing to me that this isn't like center stage as a, as a topic of conversation when we're talking about. It. Yeah, but even I recently did a, uh, an event with neuromarketers and even they are, were not fully aware of the, the, the power of the unconscious. Some are, uh, but also many people were still focused on structure and about uh, new Excel sheets and lineups. And I'm like, but wait a minute. And then when I talked about the unconscious brain and I explained them that we have over 70 cognitive biases. So these are 70 mistakes that the brain automatically makes when it's interpreting information. And when you know these 70, this is when you can influence the brain in the right way. But it seems hardly anyone is aware of that. Well, and that's because our brains, literally the subconscious, I mean, one explanation can be is that we're simply not practiced in thinking this way. We're practiced, the, the, our, we have convinced through practice that we're an I, yeah. that we are a, you know, that we're a separate individual with all these different things. And so that is that through that practice of thought, it programs our subconscious mind. So it's, it make, does make sense why this isn't like a typical conversation because there's just no access to it because we haven't been programmed to think in this way. And yeah, we may see this evolution over the next thousand years where we get more awake and hear, but, but the reality is right now we're, we're 
we're most of the time just dealing with an illusion, something that's just not there. Yeah, and people are being left in the dark by not knowing it. Like, I, together with a colleague, I created a course for students where they learn how to learn. So how, if you need to learn a new language or mathematics, how do you make sure that this information gets into the unconscious brain so it's part of your knowledge? Because on school, you hardly ever learn how you should learn. And then we teach them how this unconscious part of the brain works and how you can put information in it in the most effective way. And it's very, very popular because in schools, you're being left in the dark. And to me, it's fascinating because I'm like, there's a whole new world <laughs> there to explore. Yeah. What do you think the biggest, um, I mean, I have my thoughts on it, but we can talk about it. What do you think the biggest impediment or the biggest obstacle is for like a leader, let's say a CEO of a company or a chief people officer or something. What do you think is the biggest obstacle from them moving in this space you know, or moving with this type, moving into and discovering or being curious around these types of modalities? What do you think that is? Um, our brain changes in two circumstances. It's either passion or it's urgency. So some leaders have this intrinsic motivation to read books, explore things, get new information, and they will automatically develop themselves. But many people do not have this passion and therefore they will only change when there's an urgency, like uh, if the company goes bankrupt or you're getting fired or you're getting in a very tough situation, this is when the urgency makes the brain buy a book or read something. Um, and we're all, uh, let's say, animals that love patterns. So every day we do the same routine. So if, if it's your routine to go to work, to be a manager, go back home, watch Netflix and go to bed, um, if this is part of your routine, you will not suddenly break that routine by exploring new ideas. So it's either passion or urgency. Sometimes you'll, you'll, I'll have conversations and they're quite rare, honestly, at least at this point. Yeah where someone goes, oh my, oh my God, holy cow. Oh, look, all right, I'm willing to go, let's go. Let's get in a, in a realm of radical truth about what's going on here, right? And so I think that that's what's coming on. And I do believe that that's where you, you move when you move to sort of a non-duality approach or the approach that we take in a cloudless mind, which is not comfortable and certainly not easy for people to understand because the subconscious mind is just not programmed to think this way, right? No, true. And people are identified with, uh, so the ego thinks this is me and I'm in control and all the stories I tell myself are actually true. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, and once you realize that everything you say, including everything we just said, are merely subjective concepts, there's nothing true <laughs> about it. Right. And it's not even me talking, it's simply energy making noise. And then afterwards, my brain <laughs> creates the idea, oh, wait a minute, uh, now I think these words were part of me. And if the words come out smoothly, then the ego says, look at me, I'm a, I'm a genius. But if I say garbage, then the ego will blame, I don't know, my camera, the equipment <laughs> or the circumstances. So it's pretty funny how, yeah. how this apparatus uh, functions. And, and it's been programmed this way to function that way, yeah, right? Definitely. Through repetition and through what we've been told since we've been young kids. And, you know, that's why I said, I, I can't remember this one or a previous one. You know, maybe in a thousand years, this is a different way because we we've, we've, we've have a different story around all of this. But, you know, as the topic of this podcast and being programming the subconscious mind, our work and what we're working to bring to the world is a possibility that arises when you understand about the mind and, and the brain. Yeah. We're not telling you what to do. We're just trying to create an understanding and then just watch what comes out of that. That's why I said, once you go through this portal, this whole other world opens up. And so, yeah, that's where, because I wanted to be clear on this. And you, you can kind of program that pattern of thinking with constant exposure. And, and, and you know, I just live this life. I mean, whenever we get in a conversation, it's, we're, we're just basically laughing a lot of the time and we get a lot of shit done. Yeah, uh, if there's less noise and less distraction, it's easier, uh, definitely.
So anyway, yeah, we'll, we'll continue to drill down on this so we can bring in awarenesses. And this simple awareness programs the subconscious mind. That's all. It's, that's really what you need to do. There's not a lot to do here. And then see if a curiosity naturally arises like it does in you and me and, yeah. and others it doesn't. But I, I really do believe going forward as we move into this, this and reevaluate these co corporate cultures that you're going to see more of a movement towards this conversation that we're talking about. 